thank you so much for joining us. This is a thrill and I'm really honored to have this talent in the house to talk about this important, important thing that's going on in Seattle and, and all around. So um, let me just give a brief introduction here. I wanna thank you all for being here. The event tonight is Untold Stories, a conversation about food justice. My name is Jesse Zebart. I'm the cultural programs manager at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. I would first like to acknowledge that we are coming to you from the indigenous ancestral land of the Duwamish, Suquamish and Coast Salish peoples living in harmony with the lands and waterways along Washington's central Salish seas as they have for thousands of years. The Coast Salish are committed to honoring and protecting the waters of their ancestors for future generations. Untold Stories is a dynamic series of free online lectures, panels and conversations which inspire, empower, and educate through the art of storytelling. For information on the Untold Stories events and other upcoming programs at BIMA, please visit our website, biartmuseum.org. We will hold a Q&A at the very end of this. So please, if you're listening and you have burning questions, hold those to the end, and then you'll just use your little Q&A function at the bottom bar of your screen, and we'll get those and um, answer as many as we can. So tonight's conversation is about activism, empowerment, and building community through food justice. And with us are Chef Ariel Bangs, owner of Plant-Based Food Share and Healthy Creations. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Maine, the deaf chef Miller of Soulful Dishes and Feed the People. Welcome, Maine. Chef Tarek Abdullah, self-described as an old man who loves kids, does a little bit of cooking. <laughs> And our moderator this evening, Chef Melissa Miranda, owner and chef of Musang. Thank you for joining us tonight, Chef Melissa. I'm just gonna go ahead and kick this over to you and uh, we'll get cranking on tonight. Thanks again. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Um, I am just actually gonna do a little round table introduction for the chefs. So we can start with Chef Ariel, if you wanna, Ariella, if you wanna talk about who you are and um, yeah, and then we'll go to, uh, Chef T, and then we'll go to Chef Maine. So go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Ariel Bangs. I'm a chef, uh, business owner since uh, 2007. I've um, been cooking, um, focusing on healing through foods. So plant-based, um, focused on culture and growing our own food and teaching people how to do that. Young people, older people, anybody that wants to know. Um, do a lot with growing herbs and um and a lot of community work, you know, everything is for me is surrounding around community and figuring out ways that we can uh, be better with each other and be better in community with each other and support each other and help each other and just share love with each other. Um, and, you know, started plant-based food share um, when the pandemic happened. Prior to that, though, um, I've had my business Healthy Creations, which is a private chef business for a long time that uh, focuses on people that had food, food allergies, food illnesses, and them not being able to eat the same foods that many, um, many of their, you know, family and friends enjoy. Um, and so just transferred that into plant-based food share when the pandemic happened, giving free organic food boxes um, to anyone in the community that needs it that are comprised of ingredients from local BIPOC farmers and, um, restaurant owners and other makers and just wanting to celebrate one another and to encourage the economy to grow and to figure out just ways that we can, you know, work together and hopefully inspire other people to do the same work so that, you know, we can on a local level, make sure that everybody's eating and everybody um, is staying safe and can build businesses and just grow into whatever people want to grow into. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, and then I think maybe Jesse later, if we could have information on how to contact all the chefs or find out more information um, and find ways how they can connect with, with everyone here would be really awesome. But um, Chef T, you wanna go ahead? Uh, good evening. Yes, my name is uh, Tariq Abdullah. I have been cooking for just about 30 years between Seattle and LA. Uh, uh, teaching children as well between the ages of eight up to 17 for the past 20 years between the two cities um, and spent the last 10 years really focusing on community activism through food and education and now I run a community kitchen providing free meals 
along with a couple teens that are going to work alongside with us. And it's uh, it's been a good journey. 10 months of uh, 5,000 plus meals, I think. I, I don't know. Numbers don't matter to me. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the goal is to find solutions based on our platforms. And I want to be a part of that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to just, you know, figuring out how we can create some more bridges. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Chef Main, really quickly, you are on mute. So um, just unmute yourself and then we'll be able to hear you. On the top, probably right, um, there'll be a mute and unmute button for you. I'll see, there it goes. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Oh, you're so, good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Jermaine Miller. They call me the Deaf Chef. Um, I do, I do a lot of different things. Uh, community activist, definitely a cook first and foremost. Uh, I'm the curator at a school lunch program where pretty much we're here to challenge the quality of the food given to our children, as well as our families. Like we're, you know, just like the other chefs are talking about with what they do, we're, we're going even a little bit further than just the school lunches. And we're trying to get into the homes because right now you, you do what I do. You, we all know what's going on with this. And, and it's important that we take the lead on this and make something happen because if we don't, it, it's not gonna transpire. I agree. Thank you. Um, I am going to be asking a couple of questions for all of you. Um, just to kind of get input of um, how you've, how your journeys led you to here. Um, why is food activism important to you and to our communities? Um, and then we'll probably end with ways that we can, I guess, encourage our communities to support um, and to inspire other folks to maybe do the things that we're doing as well. Um, so the first off for, you know, it's really like I'm honored to be here among all you three. Um, I think being able to see what you guys have done during the pandemic um, has been really inspiring. Uh, we all have spaces and we've all done the things to share. Um, and I think that's inspired a lot of other restaurants to do the same, whereas we've come from really traditional backgrounds and it's been really beautiful to see how creative everyone's been. But I think the biggest question to start is what is community for all of you and how are you part of that community um, and how do you hope to build that community? So it's kind of just open. Um, you guys can unmute your mics and just kind of talk about that. No, Ariel, if you wanna start. Sure, yeah. Uh, man, community to me is um, everybody just coming together, helping each other, um, looking after each other, watching out for each other. Um, eating good food and, um, and feeling comfortable to be open with one another and to, um, to just impact each other's lives in really healthy ways and to deal with those things that are not healthy in a, um, in a family way. The only way that we can really get rid of a lot of this uh, craziness that's going on is if we deal with it as a family, if we work together and if we help and support each other. And overall for me, that's, you know, community. Um, you know, the way that I function as a community person is just getting in there. When I see that there's things that need to get done, um, I just jump in and figure out how can I use what my platform is, the network that I have, and I'm never afraid to just talk to somebody. So I just go reach out and I just talk to people. And that's, um, that's just been, you know, from how I was raised, you know, that you're not afraid of people, you interact with people. And, um, and then that's also just how you kind of find good people from not so good people and, and people that need help. And um, most of the time, people are not going to let you know that they need help because we, you know, unfortunately, we live in a culture that says be individual and don't ask for help and be really strong. But you know, the reality is that everybody's not strong all the time. And we always need help. And it's better if you feel like, you um, you're loved and it makes it a little bit easier to ask for help. And to me, community is just love and feeling loved. I feel that. Maine? 
<clears throat> yeah, to me, community is just that. When you break down the word, it's pretty much common unity. So at the end of the day, that's what we're dealing with. Like us for right now, we got a common unity. We're kindred spirits and what we do. And, and the community needs that type of attitude, right? Because everything starts from the stomach. No, nothing's gonna go over if people aren't fed. That's the way you get ideas across. Million dollar deals are done. When you deal with education, there's gonna be a plate of food. When you deal with law, ethics, things of that nature, there's gonna be a plate of food there, right? So really what we're here to do is make community mean something. And what could be more meaningful than a bunch of people being able to just walk up be fed, be loved, and be respected. So that's what we're about. Yes, I completely agree. <laughs> T, what about you? Uh, for me, it's just, I think it's its just a cross between upbringing, uh, traveling, and, you know, I think between those two, you know, it just kind of just show, it, it's, it's always been about neighborhoods being in sync when it comes to depending on each other but it it just makes sense to do it not not like well let me let me put things on let me check and see if i, I want to do it no it's just it's a humanly thing uh, and then growing up around that all the time just there was always something someone that you get to depend on talk to you know it was it was more of a thing that was just it was set up for all of us to, to pretty much depend on each other when you lived in a neighborhood. And so I think now with how machines have gotten us on such a different pace um, and neighborhoods aren't the same, we still need to create these, I, these systems of community to, people, to let people understand it's not about just being stuck within four walls. Plain and simple. I mean, I think there's something to be said, us for being here, and I think all of us maybe being from the South End, um, that like I, this completely resonates because like in order for us to survive growing up, it wasn't just our parents, it was your neighbor, it was, you know, your pastor, it was the folks down the street, and I think that that has allowed us to carry into our businesses, into like the way we think and, and, and support um, and that's pretty inspiring. I mean, like, honestly, looking at all of us here, like we were the first folks to really activate this community kitchen idea. Um, and that's huge. Like, if you think about, <laughs> let's, I mean, like, let's be frank and really think about that. Um, and it's, it's really beautiful to see because there is a common thread and you all have said that, right? Um, I think the next question is just like, with the pandemic. I think that we can all say too that like before the pandemic, we were already about it. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I think each and every one of us, um, you know, we were already doing, right, you know, we were already doing community work. We were already partnering with organizations like Feast or um, and I think that, you know, like everyone says the pandemic hit and like all these things came out of it. Um, I know, I think for me personally, it has allowed us to have this platform to spotlight the real work that we've always been doing. Um, but I think the question is just like, how do you feel that the pandemic has changed your relationship with the food? Or how do you think um, the pandemic, if anything, has given you guys a platform to share really what it is that we're about? Um, or just in general, this past year, like, how do you feel I mean, it's huge. And I just took this last month to reflect on, on all the things that we've done, but I'd love to hear about you and just like this journey, what were some highs or, or lows or, or, or successes that y'all really felt? Um, because I think from the outside, you know, a lot of you guys are watching, um, it might seem easy <laughs> or it might've spent like, you know what I mean? Like it might've been like, oh, they, they did it or, or these things, but behind the scenes, you know, there is a real community and collective and collaborative of folks. Um, and I really want people to hear about the struggles and also the wins that y'all faced because 
I know personally that this was a tough year. I mean, we were able to feed a lot of people, but I think I'm going to start with Maine because, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I just got to say this. First off, I'm from the CD, 27th and older. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just got to throw that out there. But look, this this is this is so funny. There's everything going on right now. Ariella is the one who even got me in food justice. Before mm -hmm. I met her, I, I cooked for money. Like I wasn't yeah, out of the community. What? Oh, uh, yeah. So that's how I got involved with that. Tariq used to be my boss. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we're real close friends. Uh, he, he's probably, I think he's fired me before. I'm not sure. I think I've been fired by him before or something <laughs> of that nature. Um, but what when, when this popped off, Tariq and Ariella were the first people who I personally know, and, and you as well, but I, I, you know, this is my first time dealing with you, but they were pretty much just like from day one. Okay, what we gonna do, how we're going, how are we gonna do it? What needs to happen? And one thing I learned is who's who, right? I learned what's what. Now I have a full grasp of how delicate mm -hmm. and cutthroat this business is I now I understand how much is smoke and mirrors a, a person my own five six seven eight restaurants but he doesn't own nothing right everything goes according to what somebody else says then you got people who th th these are the people who take advantage of the scenario you know what I'm talking about the 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 chop hydration station people and, and and some of these other uh restaurants where you only do stuff on christmas you won't that, that's the only time you do things like around that time and somehow you're the people able to get the amazon money you're able to get the google money you're able to get the microsoft money you haven't done any work all year but when you do somehow you get paid for it for it. Meanwhile, you got people like us for, we're really doing this. Yeah. We're really doing this and we'll be lucky to get any help, right? So when the pandemic popped off, it completely changed my relationship with food and it changed my relationship with a lot of people in the industry because most, a lot of people just ran. Yeah. People, people lost their jobs and never talked to their boss. Yes. <laughs> That's very right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, when you put it in perspective, we did an awesome thing. I'm only even thinking about it now because you said to do it, but it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of pain. Like everything didn't go smooth. We argue, we bickered. I'm pretty sure you had those issues, but you here and we here. And that's a lovely thing. Yeah. Makes me, makes me smile on the outside and the inside. I feel that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ariella. Yeah. So, um, man, you know, it's, it, I don't know, it's crazy. Like for me, I just feel like uh, over the years of doing food work, you know, I've watched people talk a good game and not really, uh, not really do the work, get the money, not do the work, um, you know, throw people under the bus, all kind of craziness. And then I just also remember seeing people that are doing amazing things, amazing work, you know, really beautiful souls and spirits. And, um, you know, when I see people doing the community work that we're doing, I see grandmas and grandpas and elders, you know, and that's inspiring to me and makes that warms me because that's always been my mindset around what community is. It's, you know, grandmas and grandpas and aunties and people that you don't even know that are your aunties and grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads that you look out for, you know, and you know, we're really responsible for teaching that younger generation who's actually teaching us right now, you know, and, um, and I think a lot of times we put like all this weight on the government and, you know, nationally and internationally, all these things that are going on and we forget locally, we have so much power. Locally, we can do so many things and it's really our responsibility to do that. It's our responsibility to change the food systems. It's our responsibility to put the weight on these people and let them know it's not okay for you to just hop in office and not you not come through. It's not okay for you, you know, for little kids to not be able to go outside and to be being hurt and killed and be afraid. It's not okay for trafficking to be happening and child abuse. It's not okay. And 
we've gotten into this time and place where we just don't say anything and we'll walk by and knowing something's not okay and not do anything. And, you know, myself, I just get tired of that, you know, and I just get really frustrated and I get angry because I'm like, these are babies, you know, we're supposed to be protecting them because they can't protect themselves. And we got to be accountable and do the right thing. And, you know, just stop pussyfooting around about stuff, you know, and, you know, and when we, I mean, I don't, I never get a chance really before the pandemic to go around people because I was always working, you know, and I was always trying to figure out how to build community, how to find money, how to collaborate with people, you know, reaching out to people that I knew and didn't know and just kind of maneuvering through this whole Seattle world. You know, Seattle is very different from any other place. And I've been to lots of places. And so, you know, ultimately for me, this, you know, is about, People don't want to really own up to that that are from Seattle, but there's a Seattle freeze that's going on and it's not great. It's not okay. It's not cool. And people act like it's not a fact, but it is. People deal with it every single day. That's why we have suicide rates the way that we are because people are alone. And so I just feel like this work is important because we got to stop that. You know, there are people that are suffering right now and we may not be suffering in our immediate space, but there's other people that are dealing with different things that we're dealing with, you know, and the whole thing for me, like the work with like healthy creations, plant-based food share, working with Jermaine, working with Tarek, working with Christy, working with people that I'm just now meeting, Feast, all these different people. The whole point for me has always been that we're role models to some people and we may not even know it. Yes. And we have to do the work that we need people to see this important because people are going to do what they see and people get on social media every day and post a whole bunch of nonsense. And so all you see is recurring nonsense versus like, Hey, support these businesses that are doing this thing. You know, um, you know, the whole point for me with plant-based food share is like, I know farmers that make 10 cents and they're growing food that people are like People are bagging up at grocery stores, getting paid $15 right now, an hour to do. And they're working hard and not being acknowledged. You know, there's like all these people of color, they've been working hard to keep their farms, to keep their businesses, you know. And then there's other people. I know people right now that get a plant-based food share box or try to, and they live in mansions. And as soon as I find that out, I'm on the phone with them. Like, um, what's going on right now? Do you like really need the food? You know, like I don't have a problem with that because I know the people that don't have food. And I think we have to do that step up a little bit more. I think it's beautiful that we are doing it. I think it's beautiful people do get to see us. But I also think that we owe, we owe more as a community, not just like us. There's a lot of chefs out here that could be doing a lot. They have businesses that are not open and that are pretty well to do. And they're just sitting there chilling. And, you know, and I'm kind of like, we're working over here and we're, we're using the money out of our pockets to make sure people have food right now. And people don't know that. They're like, oh, you guys just have money. No, we do not. But we know that people need to eat food. So we try to figure out how to do that. And people are generous and been blessing us so that we can do that. Donating, you know, all the time so that we can get food and farmers are giving stuff. And, you know, it's just the pandemic to me it's not great that COVID is here. So I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that it's great that everybody gets to see what, what other people are dealing with on a regular basis, because it's real now, because everybody's in the same boat. First of all, it's real also now, because now we understand that we have to be about community. We have to rely on each other because nobody can really be around each other right now. People have parents that like live here that live in other states and they cannot come out here, you know, so they're calling people like us to say, hey, can you just send my, my family some food, just go by check on them, things like that, you know, and that's what this is all about. This is about transforming the energy from the negative BS to the positive, beautiful work that we can be doing and bringing in that love that either we never had or that love that we see somewhere else on TV or the love that we watch in other people and doing that through food, building new food systems, building the economy up, helping people be encouraged, like go start a business, man. Now you're at home, you can get on the internet instead of <laughs> Facebook and you can go ahead and go figure out how to start a business. Mm -hmm. You know, do a virtual class. I'm not saying you have to be cooking, but you could do something. Like there's ways, 
I see so many people use social media in these ways to make money. And I'm watching other people say, I can't do it. And I'm like, dude, you can do this. Like you're on, use the internet right now. It's not good. Right now it's free. One day the internet may not be free for us. They're talking about that right now. <laughs> so like use those, use those tools, you know, um, and just really don't be afraid. You know, I feel like we're building a community of fearlessness now from a community that we had that was all about fear before. And we're really, you know, just us as a whole, you know, we are making it so the people that are not doing anything, they're knowing other people are looking at them not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So now they have to do something. And yes, maybe it started off because they were kind of like, oh man, they're messing it up for me. But now they're like, oh, okay, I can do something. Mm -hmm. Let me give some food away. Let me go make a, make me make something. Let me buy something from some other chefs. And I just think that that's really beautiful for people to be able to do to come to those epiphanies and those awarenesses on their own and to do introspection and reflection because people can teach you something all day long but once you get to by yourself and realize oh I could be doing better and yeah. you start to do better things change in a very very different drastic way I think I, <clears throat> I think given the time I think for all of us too it's just like COVID forced us all to have to stop, like not stop necessarily on what we're doing, because obviously we're continuing the work, but like it's made you stop here, mm -hmm. stop here. And like, that's the first time I think for a lot mm -hmm. of people, because usually work is like distraction or yeah, I'm going to do this because I got to hustle or I'm doing this or I'm doing that, that mm -hmm. like, this is the first time you're like, well, what am I actually doing? Is there intention yeah. actually to it? And mm -hmm. it's a positive impact to it. Um, and I think for me, that's been the most beautiful thing to see because yeah. people are challenged. Like that uncomfortableness is mm -hmm. challenging and people are like, oh, I'm not, wait, I see them doing that. <laughs> I should wait, hold, you know? And so yeah, I think for me, it's been really beautiful to see our community rise, like not rise up, I don't say, but just like we've been here, we've been doing mm -hmm. it. And that's been a beautiful challenge for other people to, to, step, to take the step forward, right? Um, and even to ask, you know, people are now asking, like, how are you doing this? I want to do this. I want to help. How can I be involved? Like, you know, just offering. And sometimes it's just the offer. It's not even like, that. You, maybe you can't do anything. It's like, people are just really like, okay, whoa, this is real. Like, talk to me about what these experiences that you have been having are how do I help? How do I be a part of this? How do we make changes? And like people are really diving deeper than I think they ever have dived before because they're realizing that, whoa, this, the, it could have been me's that people had five years ago or like, whoa, this is a, everybody right now. You know, how do we be better together for everybody, you know? And also some people are able to just take a stop by, step back and like not do anything because some people need to just not do anything. Absolutely. You know, and just kind of relax and just kind of chill out and do nothing. <laughs> you know, it's like self actual self care or like let's heal our bodies because they're kind of broken. <laughs> totally, our minds, like our yeah. hearts, need to get cleaned right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Karik, yeah. I know you're there. <laughs> Come on, Shifty. Mm -hmm. Uh. You know, I started my very first class was in 2001 at Robertson Community Center. It was summer camp and I had 22 kids. And uh, I freaked out, but I knew I could get through it. And through that, that's pretty, that was when I knew it was, like it was one thing I knew I wanted to cook, but really it was just, it was the kids. And there was something about seeing them learning and then knowing that there's always opportunity in food, no matter what level it is. Uh, let me see if I can get this video thing at work. Hold on. Sorry, I got a hey, number one, no one rule. Don't use your hotspot. Uh, get an actual <laughs> router in your house, people. Yes. Yeah, that's old man telling you that. <laughs> okay. There you are. Uh, uh, 
but uh yeah um really just really all i wanted to do really is just enjoy cooking but really just teach um and yeah covid like i think what covid did for me it's one thing that we provided the meals mm -hmm. which was great but it was the cool thing about it and the beautiful thing about it collectively uh a new system was unveiled for just about a year you know of food access we saw that be displayed you know um so now there's the framework of saying there's no excuse that access to food and how it's being put out and used and free can happen um and then on the other part really for me i just want to be able to teach the kids so you know uh and the communication allows me to to give what i've always wanted to do cook they get to see the world of food and learn a little bit about the access and the whole process and to be a part of that is just something I feel like is just important. You know, I was a homeschool kid. So, you know, it's different for the idea of just being in four walls and just learning. It's just like, I think we have to look past that now anyways. So I just feel like, Hey, how old are you? You're 11. Okay. Yeah. You, know, you need this, you need this spatula right now and meet me at the classroom. We're going to go to work. So it's just for me. Yeah. And you know, trying to figure out how we can create systems so I can be able to continue to work, and other folks want so they can want to do the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think part of that that I admire the most is a lot of us grew up in a very different kitchen system brigade, um, where it was, uh, you know, this hierarchy, or um, you become like a yes chef kind of person, and to be able to see the kids that you're fostering and teaching that it doesn't have to be that way and that um, we can approach food in a very different way for me is the most beautiful thing because not only does it allow kids to be inspired through you because you're incredibly inspiring, but that how we've been thought, like taught how it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and I think that aspect and having like seeing the kids in the community kitchen has been pretty incredible for me and very different, you know. Um, so I just wanted to say that's thank you because I think a lot more people should be doing that. Um, I think a thing to like add to that is that, you know, so many little kids, especially little black boys get to see yes. Chef Tarek and Chef Maine and and they get to have a, a different view of what life can be like and then they get to talk to them and see wow these guys just like love us just because there's no agenda there you know and they will do whatever for us to be able to be successful little guys because and they have mentors that and uncles in those two that they never have to wonder if they're safe or if they're protected because they could call them at any time. And I think that that's important because we kind of live in a world where um, things are kind of women centered and it's like, oh, if you need help, go ask your mom, go ask your auntie, go talk to that teacher who a lot of times are women. And so to, for these for these little munchkins to be able to see like, whoa, I can, not only are they teaching me and I'm learning something that's cool, but like they actually care and I can see myself doing this. And, you know, the energy is really positive and it's always welcoming and there's always that, you know, that whatever that best person in your life energy is. And I think that's really important because there's so many kids that are going through so many different things and they need to have that role model. They need to have that community and they don't even realize it's community that they have until like a year later or two, they're talking about, hey, Chef T, I wanna come in and cook with you. Or, you know, Chef Maine, you know, thank you for those meals. Cause they like got me and my family through cause we didn't have any food when I was going to middle school. You know, things like that. I just think are just really important and heartwarming. And, you know, they kind of make me cry inside cause I'm just like, oh man, you know, we need more we need more chef tees and more chef mains around because there's so many kids, you know, there's only two of them. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and it gives them this different perspective too, of like, 
I don't know when we had this mom and her son would come pick up meals and then at home her son had this like truck but then he had like he was like are we gonna drop off meals today and it's just like these kids are watching us these kids are watching them and they're getting a very different and beautiful perspective um yes that part in itself because we don't know you know like they're watching they're always watching um and so to be able to have y'all as just that even just like as simple as that because it is impactful and they'll remember it like you said like these these kids are going to grow up 10 years from now and be like, hey, remember that time and that sense of us being selfless because that's what it is and just gratitude um, will be passed down in some way, which is incredible. So for that, we have that. <laughs> from this, we have that. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, so I'm going to just ask a question of like, what is some what is your comfort food during the pandemic? So we can just kind of share a little bit of that. And after that question, um, we're gonna kind of go into how are ways people can show up and help us and help support the community. But I think it'd be really great for folks that are tuned in to hear the food that sustains us and has sustained us during the pandemic, because I always like to know what people are cooking because <laughs> 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 I'm always hungry. <laughs> so um main send some over oh, yeah i know <laughs> how about, what's what's been your go-to for the pandemic what's been the best or like the best thing that you've shared or or, or anything so ziki play oh okay. oh oh okay. yeah okay you know, i mean i've been on i've been on the non and the tomato oh man Killing it, the tomatoes, onions, and the the herb yogurt, and the skewman. I'm doing, all, I'm doing all type of. <laughs> I'm wild. What? Hey, I'm like Tariq at home right now. I'm mincing up. <laughs> I'm mincing stuff up and put, putting it on, <laughs> putting it on the grill. Oh man, I'm wilding right now. This is crazy. I'm I'm throwing stuff off my elbow. I'm doing the. Most- <laughs> I got I got pink salt. I got black salt. I, I'm with I'm with no, I, I, crazy. I, I want all the smoke. I, I got all the plants. I got plain. I got plain naan. I got garlic herb. I got roasted pepper. Man, I'm with. It. I'm making chutneys and oh man. Oh man, wait a minute. Can I get a plate? Wait a minute. I need some yeah. chutneys. And, oh yeah, and you know what? I gotta hook you up with the with the vegetarian lupia Man. oh yeah i'm doing that the the, the any house and the yes the, the elbows. i'm yeah yes yeah <laughs> yeah oh, yeah. yeah yeah i'm on his i'm on his message board pretty regularly like is it vegetarian is there vegetables in there is it vegan like can i just get my vegan one you know he's like okay not yet i'm like all right well tomorrow you know, are you making the vegan oh, one today? speaking of that I just made some uh, garden burger hash for the kids up at Green what? Tree. Cause you know, I make, yeah. uh, the kids are vegetarian. So nothing <laughs> could be, oh man, I'm I'm getting, I'm getting my skills up. <laughs> I love I'm it. Getting, wow. And I'm eating the stuff. Yep, I be putting me something to the side of all like, oh, this is all right, right? <laughs> uh, okay, I might have to start eating these damn garden burgers. <laughs> yep. That's right. I love it. I love it. Oh man. I need a garden burger. I need you know what? I just uh, learned how to make a little hemp uh, Brazil nut uh omelet the other day because uh my son won't eat eggs. So uh he ate it. He was like, Mommy, this is good. I was like, Yeah, this is pretty good. Let's put some avocados on here with some some real zucchini and some just little (laughs) veggie parmesan on here. He was like, No, I don't want all that, but I'm gonna eat this little scramble. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. I want one of everything though, Maine. One of everything. And I'll pick it up. You ain't gotta come bring it. <laughs> yep, yep, I got you. I got you. No question. Them chocolate chip cookies, you know, need a need a couple of those too. But that but them got butter in them. 
okay. We're gonna work on yeah. we're gonna work on that. Well, what, oh, but, but what I could put I could use coconut oil, huh? You can, but I can bring you some uh, I got some veggie but, uh, butter at the house. Yeah, bring me some of that and I'll make you a batch. <laughs> bring me some of that veggie butter. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Oh, I love it. Oh, um, yeah, I love it. I love it. What's your favorite food? What you eating right now, Chef T? Honestly, I have not been. I have, I have not been cooking. My last day cooking was on oh January first. That was like my last day, so I haven't even been cooking. So I've just been mostly snacking. Okay, snacks okay. are good. What's your favorite snack? I don't really have favorite snacks. Uh, I'm a chip guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been doing rice a lot, you know, because I have a lot of it here at the house, just like doing different spice flavors. Mm. Um, and then, you know, uh, Leanne and Derek, they just cook all the time. So I'm kind of at that house getting my free meals. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but nobody really want, you know, and now I can't even get meals now, right? It's one thing when I was trying to like, can somebody who wants to cook, you know? Leanne <laughs> don't hesitate. Leanne doesn't hesitate in cooking for me, which is which is great. So the fact that is the campaign feed the chef, Seattle.com is on the way. Oh, wait. Uh, what? Oh, say okay. that again. Can you yeah. say that louder? Because I think I want to be part of that <laughs> one too. <laughs> Uh, very good. Um, no, all seriousness, I have, honestly, I have not been cooking. I've just been like, you know, listen to them, like watch them cook, and the food's been good. Food's been good. They they can really cook. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, they're in their, their new house, and so I know they've been cooking a lot. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. They've been cooking a lot. How about you, Shaq? Beautiful. Um, cooking these days. Man, you know, we've been making a bunch of rice dishes, you know, I've been doing some virtual cooking classes, so I didn't have a, to make the food, you know, for those and, and kind of taste them. I think my thing right now is um, I like to make pasta too. So, um, you know, I've been making raviolos, um, pizza is my thing, you know, I love, you know, making pizza. Um, <clears throat> You know what else? I I love. I'm a hot chocolate person. I've been making marshmallows. You know, vegan marshmallows and making hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, but you know, my son's like, I want hot cocoa. I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. Let's make that happen. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna join you on that one. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, we have to have a hot chocolate date. You know. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I like to eat a lot of vegetables. So I eat a lot of vegetables. You know, lately I've been eating a lot of greens. Um, you know, um, I've been doing a little bit of raw food. And so I've been making a lot of wraps and just playing around with ingredients. I made a butternut squash pasta that was like really, really good. And so, you know, I'm just kind of been playing around with the different things. Uh, I think my newest my newest, most favorite vegetable is a rutabaga. I never had cooked it before and then learned how to make all types of things with it. Um, and I was like, oh, this is a slamming little vegetable. I got to play around with this a little more often, <laughs> you know? Um, so yes, yeah, so I do, you know, a lot of that. I love black rice. And so I made a, a beet poke bowl, you know, recently. And so I just kind of like to play around with flavors, you know, um, in the back of my mind, the uh, tarts in the back of my mind, every time I go in there and get ready to put some garlic and onions and paprika together. And I'm like, okay, go ahead and add some saffron in here. Or... <laughs> Spice it. <laughs> like, get your life right. Do, do, do it like you would do if you were actually hired to cook for somebody. Don't just put some salt and pepper and some paprika. <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm no. usually like, <laughs> uh, you know occasionally I'm like but mm -hmm. you know I, I have all the different salts I don't you know usually use salt but like my right now my favorite salt is um Hawaiian black lava salt so I just add a little bit of that in there you know but mm -hmm. I'm always kind of like scanning you know uh Maine and uh well Targ doesn't really have a whole bunch of pictures on there but I'm on the regular like can I get some of them lumpias are they vegan you know what's <laughs> up with that salad just hold my hold the chicken off of mine what about the cookies 
you know, Chef P, can I get some of that horchata? You know, I'm trying to get everybody else's food because I don't want to cook. <laughs> I mean, we really should feed that's the fat campaign for. because that's, that's... I mean, listen, yeah, I've been asking about your food too. I'm like, okay, so Chef, so what man what can i eat on her menu she's like uh, you probably have some rice i'm like okay that works <laughs> yeah, i got some good stuff for you coming out this this menu yeah are you open tomorrow we're open we have community kitchen tomorrow and I'm then we open yeah and then we have I'm, the restaurant's opening on wednesday but yeah i'm coming up there tomorrow yes please mm -hmm. do <laughs> we would love that um okay so what about well, you you didn't say your well, favorite yeah. <laughs> i'm on this feed the chef campaign because uh <laughs> i too am looking for food cooked by other people hey, it's i'm not gonna put the shirt up yet y'all not ready for that I mean, <laughs> that's coming. real yeah. we, laugh, we laugh now but i guarantee you i've I feel I'm all over that. Hey, you know, listen, yeah, feed the chef guy. campaign. Let me know. <laughs> let's, let's go get them. <laughs> um, I've been. I think the easy, like the simple one pot dishes, or stuff you can just throw in the oven and roast. Mm -hmm. um, I've been like Asian stir fries are always so easy, mm -hmm. and then you're just getting your veg and your protein. So yeah, that's. I'm really obsessed with just peppers and broccoli rob and mm. then that's it simple and then i can't eat white rice anymore so i have to eat whole grain but i'm making oh, adjustments okay. but it's okay yeah keeping that <laughs> alternate rice mm -hmm. yeah keeping that alternate rice in the house i'm trying to get on some of that red rice where's that red rice at and the ID. Uh, it's bomb. Ooh, the ID. You got to get it. That's the good stuff. We'll be bringing that so, back. It's so bomb. It's so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been looking for red rice. They're like, no. I'm like, all right, I'll be back. <laughs> so good. We'll find you a bag. Please, the rice, please. The rice is red already. Mm hmm. Like yes, black it rice. Is, it's red already. Yes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. see, yes. where, you that? where you see i'm learning something today where is that at where is that <laughs> all right man oh man we'll find man, a bag rice. i'll get a bag for y'all and then i'll drop it off for both for yes both. you get an id but it's super flavorful it's healthy but it's it's good yeah. um okay so we're gonna i'm gonna kind of shift over we'll do a final round of i think how what's the ask for the community like if it's you and you're talking about what it is what you're doing <clears throat> how can they help and then where where can we direct them i guess it's more like a call to action i'd say like so for for example with musang community kitchen you know we're, we're open monday to wednesday for phone and calls we are partnered currently with Oxbow and a couple of other farmers. They do donations, but how can people help? Because um, I think we're, you guys are all examples of, of doing the work, but how can we get people to also join in on this? Um, so we'll do a quick round of that and then we'll open it up to uh, some Q&A time for the folks that are joining us. But yeah, I think it, it'd be really great for people to hear how how they can get involved um, because we know that it's really just starting with us and, and the community at hand. So I don't know, T, why don't we start with you? Um, well, uh, Community Kitchen starts back up uh, Friday, February 5th. Uh, we're gonna run the same schedule, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, located at Coyote Central, mm -hmm. um, uh, 12 to five. Vegan Fridays, vegetarian Saturdays. So we're only gonna have offer meat on Thursdays. Okay. Um, we, you know, um, honestly, right now I'm looking for three solid cooks to volunteer the kitchen. I'm pretty close to pretty much what we had talked about, Melissa. In the end, at the end of the day, it yeah. was really to come out of the kitchen and have volunteers run the kitchen. So <laughs> the first month where we're gonna, um, I'm 
going to try that. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, pretty excited about that. Food supplies were pretty good okay. uh, at the moment. Um, we're partnering with three farms, um, Clean Greens, Black Star, and Yes Farms. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the food's going to, I'm looking forward to hearing, you know, to seeing what our new cooks are going to have. So pretty excited. So yeah. So in order for people to contact you, what's the best, best place? Um, uh, feed the people, uh, SEA at gmail.com okay. or through IG, feed the people Seattle um, on IG for right now. We got some stuff in the works coming. Um, so, and merch is on the way. Yeah, so I just gonna say we had a question about merch, so. It's on the way, yeah. Okay, so either hit up the IG, feed the people Seattle, S-E-A or the email. Um, great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chef Maine, how do you think and how do you feel like you can be supported with what's, what you're doing and, and how do we get people to be more involved? Yeah, um, uh, obviously uh, finances is always a concern, right? But I'm not really big on asking for money, although we do need it. I, I will say that sometimes just getting the information out or making sure these people are not making these sacrifices for no reason, right? Like come out and support what the chefs are doing, yeah. right? If, uh, you know, like if you don't want any food, then donate but if you can't donate help the chefs to distribute the resources because resources are no good sitting in the central in the centralized area that's just what it is and a lot of times these chefs are being left with all this product that they're trying to push out into the community and they're getting mixed signals right because right. we're we're they're being told we need you uh what are we going to do how are we going to think well, why is this guy left with all this food? Yeah. So now it's going to cost you money to get rid of something that's cost you time. And, and I don't even want to make it about us. Yeah. But if we're asking what y'all could do to help man support, if you can't donate, that's cool. Come and, come and receive the resources. That way it makes sense for us to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. I agree. I think one thing that we face too within our community kitchen is exactly what you're saying is like, here's the food. We hear the ask. Can you find people that will pick it up? Um, so I yeah. think, yeah, just like if, if, you know, the folks that are joining, like we have a partnership now with Wasset and um, South Park. And like, we know every Wednesday that these meals get picked up, but like, we're here, we're here to feed just connect um, and if we're not able to or I'm not able to there's so many of us that can on different days but they can, there can't be an excuse anymore that there's not food because we know that there's food and we're providing that food um, in terms of the resource finances like I'll see if Jesse um, I think it's important that we we put that ask out because I know that a lot of us especially looking at the ones here is a lot of the stuff we've done has been out of pocket um, we have been fortunate to receive donations from folks, but this is a continued effort. Um, it's not just a one-time thing. I know that all of us are in here for, for the long haul. Um, in order for that to be the case, um, we're here for, you know what I mean? Like, as we take care of community, community can help take care of too. Um, so I know that's a big thing. So uh, I'm sure we can kind of list how people can donate and different organizations as well that are in line and in partnership with us. So, um, Chef Ariel, how do you feel like uh, you can feel supported um, and resources that people can click on or, uh, yeah? Well, I mean, there's a couple of things, you know, I think one thing is, um, you know, we're in the process of transforming into a nonprofit. And so just as you know, that paperwork is intense and getting the support to do it is intense and, you know, running 
running organizations, you know, is, you know, just doesn't give you a whole lot of time to do everything. So, you know, for me, like, you know, finances are super important. You know, I've actually been having some conversations about like, where's the money going, you know, cause there's billions of dollars floating around here. And so, um, you know, I've been trying to ask, uh, you know, wh wh where is it at? Because, you know, we're doing the work, you know, all of us are doing the work but we shouldn't be having to spend money out of pocket. You know, we shouldn't have to rely on grants, you know, and things like that, because, you know, I'm, I'm watching other people get um, millions of dollars, you know what I mean? Pretty, pretty consistently. Um, so maybe there's like some, you know, some conversations or some kind of support around, you know, being able to provide that type of knowledge or wisdom or, um, or even just people that are knowing people that they can, you know, support, you know, philanthropists are amazing, you know, because they're people that want to already see good things being done and we're doing the good things. So, you know, having that philanthropy connection is really important. Um, I think the other part that's really important for me is, um, you know, plant-based food share is bigger than just a food box. And because of that, we have other ways that we reach out to the community and we support the community through things like, you know, activities for kids and recipes and all these different things. And so, you know, one of the two of the things that we're working on right now that I would really love to have help in is, you know, figuring out some ways to help make this homeschool life easier for people. So activities and tools and just tips that people want to share. Maybe some educators would love to like contribute to the newsletter or to our Facebook or our social medias, you know, to just kind of spread that word, make it a little easier for people. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, we're doing some mastermind sessions and so we're partnering with businesses that are going to teach recipients how to do, how to start businesses. Mm -hmm. So if there's, you know, business owners that want to, you know, jump in, we're not asking for food businesses. It's all type of businesses because everybody wants to do a, a variety of different things. Um, we can always use dry ingredients. We go through beans and rice and things on a regular basis, you know, like we go through a lot, a lot of those things every single day. And so that's, you know, one thing, you know, spices and herbs, those types of things are really important. We can always use more volunteers. Um, you know, we've been getting a lot of really great support, but you know, one thing we know is that a lot of people are out of jobs. And so even though they can volunteer, you can get burnt out too, Yeah. you know, um, and even finances are important to be able to pay those volunteers that are out of jobs that are coming and doing the work, even if it's just a little bit, being able to offer them a little something, even if it's like gas or we can give you a couple hundred dollars a week to be doing this, you know, this work is really important. Um, I think the other part of it too is it's always important to me to spotlight these farmers. You know, these farmers are like doing the most right now. And I really would love it if people that are buying things from grocery stores would buy things from these farmers because most of every farmer that I know, like Sky Island Farm, you know, at least 30 farms with the Pacific Coast Harvest, that kind of, right. You know, like they're doing this work, Farmer Frog, they're, you know, Clean Greens. These guys are doing this work and they have CSA programs. And people just need to sign up to them. They would like Bill and Katie, they will deliver to your house. It doesn't, and they're coming from Gray Harbor, you know, like that's like what three, four hours away, you know. Yeah. So just like supporting them is super important. And then just figuring out ways to me for people is just coming through and asking, like, how can you support? Because like day to day, the support needs are different for us. You know, one day it may be we need a grant writer. Another day, it may be that we need somebody to just write this newsletter. And another day, it may be I just need somebody to organize this like 7,000 tasks list that I have every single day. Yeah. You know, so I think it just kind of just depends, you know, on what the needs are. You know, we're looking for a space right now. And so, um, you know, I've been having people try to offer, hey, we have a commercial kitchen space, which is great, but we need a warehouse. Yeah. You know, we need dry storage and cold storage and parking and all these things. So like, if anybody knows of, spaces that are available that would be really helpful just for me you know um and then partnerships if there's partnerships and collaborations that people think that we should be connecting with you know shoot those over let us know because we may not know everybody that knows everybody so you know it's always helpful to just you know say hey you guys should maybe partner with this person let me do an introduction not just go and find them you know like send some info you know send the information you know make the connection <laughs> right yes I feel that. 
Um, I think Jesse's listed everyone's information in the chat box. Um, so if you have questions on how to find us, it's all listed there. Um, I'm going to leave up the next maybe like 15 minutes to some questions. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and type them in into the Q&A. Um, one question is, what are what is something that you would like to see happen as organizations get to see you and want to support you? I think um, Chef Ariel mentioned that of just reaching out to us and like putting on folks that, you know, cause we are so limited to in our resources. Every single one of us here owns and operates, you know, businesses and have families. And um, I find it most helpful when, when people send you know, like, hey, this this farmer is really incredible, or this organization is incredible for you to support. We're open to all of those suggestions. Um, I think, yeah, if anyone has questions, please feel free to type it in the box. I don't know, unless I we've answered say, all of them. <laughs> I, I, I will say, you know, uh, I think, yeah, like connections, like what Melissa was saying would be good more connections like people that know that do food production uh legal people who spin who are in that world of food through legal will be really good to know uh food scientists mm -hmm. I, I know there's uh there, there's there's more to it than just you know putting it in the bag you know uh definitely trying to find as many new food connections because it's one thing to work on a system and and have it, but if we're going to implement it, then we need to start learning some of the other aspects of what it takes to actually make it a concrete system. So uh, definitely want to meet more people who have expertise in, in a lot of those things that I just mentioned. Just mentioned so. Um, someone asked about FEAST. Um, we can get that information to you, F-E-E-S-T. Um, it's a program that works with high school, um, high schools in the South End about uh, food justice and accessibility. Um, they're an incredible program. Um, we've done fundraisers with them and have taught classes with them, but they're an incredible um, organization if you're looking for the, like people to support. Um, I don't think if we have any other questions, I think... I can say thank you guys so much for spending this last hour with us. It was really great to, to connect with you, Maine and Chef Ariel. And I can't wait to, to spend time and space with you guys outside of the Zoom world. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, I have so much respect for you um, and to just be able to be here in this space. Uh, there's just a lot of gratitude because uh, we know how hard this work is, but it makes it easier for me to know that y'all exist because it makes it a lot less isolating and lonely because I know that we have community. Um, so thank you so much. Um, thank you, Jesse. Uh, thank you for to Bainbridge Island Museum of Art for having us tonight. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you guys wanna say anything as we exit this, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I do want to say something. Somebody went in the question and said they wanted the uh, information for the farmers, so yeah. I can send those over. But um, how how do we go? Who do we send them to? How do we go about getting that to you? It was just in one of the questions. They oh. said they want to support the they want to support the farmers that uh, we mentioned. So, and I have to look at their e their websites and emails so that I can get that. So. Should we have them just contact uh, you directly through your Instagram? Sure, yeah, they can contact email? me and I can I can message people um, there or just, you know, make contact with people. They can do Instagram or they can send an email to me. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty flexible. I know quite a few, you know, as we all do, but I know quite a few farmers. And so, um, you know, so I'd love to share that information. Oh, I know what I need real quick. I need a mechanic or... <laughs> <laughs> or someone with a uh, storage space, roughly about eight to 10 feet tall and about 12 feet long. If you have, if anybody knows, I'm looking. Okay. Yeah. Dry storage. 
No, just storage. Well, just working on something. So I was looking for some storage. So if somebody <laughs> had somebody has something, please let me know. That'd be much <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. The mad scientist in the lab. I love it. I mean, I need no. some storage too, but you know, uh, I prefer a space and then it has the storage in it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you for being Sunday Thank here God. with us. Thanks so That's much for joining us, everyone. It's it's really an honor, and I appreciate you just sharing everything you shared tonight with all of us. So I hope you get a lot of support from this, and please let me know how I can continue to support you as well, and the museum as well. And we're here for you. So bless you. I can all. tell you something really quick, though, um, since you said that I have been trying to do some connecting with the indigenous communities to get uh, this food out. So if you have some uh, connections that you would be willing to just, you know, put us in contact, you know, I just want to start the conversation at least. Yep, absolutely. Beautiful. Thank Man, you. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm, 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 I'm pulling up. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank All right, y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>